Hello, YouTube. We're back with another VOD review. It's a little bit late at night, but we're still cruising. Uh, Challengers League action. We've got Disguise versus AoE in a money match. AoE needs to start finding wins. They actually want to stay in the league and outside of relegation. Uh, Disguise ended up taking this one 2 1. So we're going to see how they ended up doing that. Uh, let's dive on in. Okay, game one. All right. Uh, Corky taken away. Tristana that through. So the answers to Tristana are going to be probably Lucian, but we have the Caitlyn mid this game. So Zyra Kate locked on in. Um, I kind of assume it's going to be Kate mid. We did see T1 playing a little bit of this in the uh, uh, EWC tournament. Uh, new answer to Tris. You can't try and push it out early, but my issue with this comp is that this is all about the lane phase. Our team fight is nothing later on in this game. So it's going to be about the full court press for AoE, getting ahead and going from there. We do have a little bit of poke, but Wormog's to catch. Innate healing. Uh, Ziggs, I think, really good into this lane. I very much favor the bot lane. And Ziggs was really good pick this game. So I think looking back, if we're going to ban out Kaisa and Zeri at one point, I would have taken away Ziggs, uh, especially with the Tristana showing. Um, wasn't the case, though, and Tomo ended up kind of cooking him. So that said, let's dive on in. Five-man top, because we are playing Jace into TF. And it starts with a double kill. I'm not going to talk about it. Barrack blew a flash. Very worth it. That's some good gold right there. Gold advantage for all five members. Uh, so this lane top, Barrack needs to play it very volatilely. It needs to be a very volatile lane. For Barrick uh, in this matchup. He does a decent job with it. Uh, but again, I think that this comp is just way easier for DSG to pilot. Um, so NXI is going to path towards top. We got Brand pathing bot on the flip. Right, they get Breezy Flash, Frozen Lane, Tomo can TV back at any time, so kind of hard that Wixie's already losing that. Uh, Tenacity also skilled Q. His lane's in a really tough spot. Usually we don't see Q skilled until much later. STF, when you are playing AD, like until you get five points in both W and E, but... Just given the fact that Selene is hard and it's bouncing away from him. Uh, he did scale Q, got some CS, and now he has his, his boys coming up to make sure he crashes. Very important given that he has double summoner spells. <coughs> Excuse me. You can leave Zig's bot on uh, their, like, left of their own devices. So I, I did like that roam. We still see Tenacity having to go all the way back before he's actually able to get a base off, but does get a somewhat clean base off. But after that rotation, we spot Alistar on this ward right here with the Caitlyn. And Yukino doing a second clear, a little bit delayed because he wants to go assist top, but uh, is going to go take the Drake. So we'll be Drake for Grub's trade, which I think given what top one's like, makes a lot of sense and is okay. So Drake for Grubs, it's all right for DSG. Again, DSG, they scale really, really heavily this game. Uh, really like the setup they have, like, gold card, like, and Leona, plus, Br like, that's such good setup for Brand. And I think it's really good setup for Ziggs, too. They have a good balance of damage. I really like this draft for DSG. thought this series is honestly, like, kind of three draft ifs, in a way. Really well played here by Cupic. 
Uh, finds the Nat into trap combo. Young walked into it. Really well played. Does trade one for one, but nice kill. See, Tenacity's still getting pushed around. Down 30. NXI is coming up. He is able to lose that wave. And this is where I think Tenacity, like, actually makes a really, really good play. Uh, oh, wait, not, not, not yet. Goes back off. NXI does not stick around. Uh, this wave's still, like, really scuffed, though. Jace was able to get a really good recall off. <clears throat> so, with his lane being cooked, it's being frozen right now by Barrick. You can see this wave on your mini-map. Yep. Uh, Tomo's gonna go for a big trade on Wixie. Good sidestep on Wixie's part. However, we have the Avengers coming in. Five man. Tenacity's in there real deep. But he's able to get a piece of all these kills. And Poom dies. Well worth it. Really big play coming out of DSG. <clears throat> uh, tenacity again. His lane's really bad. I really like this roam. His wave's frozen. Can be no response. So at least go make something positive out of it. And he only he loses a couple waves to get three assists. That's fine. And then from there... <clears throat> um... Yeah, it was really nice engage from Poom. Tenacity walks mid. So he's actually able to pick up some CS. And Young TP top to save the top side. So it was a really good post play from DSG as well. <clears throat> you can see Young's TP's down. They do give up six grubs, which is tough for Jace. Uh, and then Young does go down. So I think on the flippity flop here, like, seeding Grubs is fine, but maybe there's a ward or two like we can do to help Young, or Young is able to recall and then redeploy and then just sack that pressure. So I, I this is a way that I don't think Young can stay for, and I'm correct. He does auto Barrack twice. Maybe if he continues to auto the wave, it's doable. He still has no alt, no flash, though. And then Barrack's able to shred this turret, so... It still has two Drakes for six Grubs. Uh, and given that AoE, like, they have to really sprint the map, Barrack is the one thing that can actually win them the game. But it's really easy to make plays on Jace in the side lane when you have TF and Leona. <clears throat> Jace ain't shit against those champs, man. If you get a gold card off, that Jace is dead. And Barrack went Mercs, so he knows. Split call. Um, <clears throat> I think Barrack's dead on my screen. Tenacity doesn't have any flash, but if you can OC here, they at least get his flash. Good flash here by Yukino. I mean, the chase is on. Cupid can't... I mean, Cupid can join. I think Cupid may be TP to this wave. It's doable. So I, it, it, it's it's a 4v5. It's kind of hard. To get top, or they get bot all the way in to the inner, and then they just fly man to play top. And this is how I think DSG should play the game. Just continue to overload. If you take flashes away with TF and the Ana, they're so fucked. You have Ziggs over the top two. Ziggs, Tristana reach is crazy. Keep on denying flashes. And, I mean, this is another one. This one's just too free. No flash for NXI. I mean, now Barracks fucked. And, like, again, Cupic can't show fast enough. 
You don't have the safety of like a Trist on side. It's K Chase. It's quite punishable by DSG if you just continue to overload. I mean, Barrick does his best here in a way, but it's it, there's just no play. And like, I mean, this is where the game is just fucked. Um, I do think that Breezy might be able to, to have put himself up here earlier. Like that blast cone for me from Breezy's poor. Because, like, Breezy, with this Blast Cone, you can actually go defend Jace. You kind of have foresight to see, like, hey, this might be coming. Uh, not to mention maybe defend NXI. Like, Breezy could have been on the other side of the wall this play and isn't. And is late to both plays. So. Ouch. Six scrubs. Kate does take bot. But we get two crashes on the Rift. And Young's able to... Oh, boy. I mean... Uh, Q Flash is the only way that play works. Oh, that's a big investment, though. That's tough. Gets the E to go off, so gets a... Gets another jump. And Tomo eats everything. Can Tomo position better here? He's catching this very high. Uh, he gets caught by Zyra. That's fine. Zyra's from Fog. Right? Yeah, Zyra's not spotted. That's all right. Maybe that, like, micro step back could be fixed, but... Or it could have been different. It's fine. And I mean, yeah, like, this game's just all about overloading sides, guys. If we overload sides as DSG, this game is pretty unlosable. So, we get top all the way in after that rift push, by the way. It's still shoving back to the DSG. They do not have to answer that wave. They can go mid, TF port. They see, every, like, everyone. Yeah, it's free. It's really good. Really good gameplay here from DSG, actually. Like, look, the top wave's still going to crash in. They can take that at any time. So there's a dead lane here for AoE. Because, like, again, there's they cannot play sides against this TF. Like, the Kate Jace just cannot function on sides against TF, Sigs, Trist, and Leona. I thought this draft was, like, really good for DSG. And if AoE don't blitz the map at the first, like, 10, 15 minutes, it's GG's. Boom for NXI, worth. NXI did not ult or flash here. Ouch. You do have a bit of a window to drop R on yourself here. Jesus. Okay, Milan fixed top. And then one bot, and then he gets to go fix top again. Yeah, they try. I mean, they're grasping at straws already. You can kind of see how desperate it is for AoE. It's a really, really tough scenario for him already. This game. Yep, just deploy through mid and 4 1 it.
Really tough to walk into TF, Leona, Ziggs. Really like Tomo dropping the minefield at that little choke right there. I mean, again, like, look at the chunk on Breezy. Yes, he has Mogs, but... So they're relegated to the playing through bot, and then Ziggs gets to play in this choke, and look at all the damage that Tomo puts down. Hey, uh, it, the openings you want to play through against Ziggs are on this side of the map, or this one, or this one. This one's tough, but given where they're at in the map... I think the AoE should have walked around, but like that would have put them in a really tough spot again. And like this Ziggs damage just it's it's so crazy. They do get tenacity. But it's still a one for one and then fast track to mid and they steal blue. Like bot wave isn't gettable for AoE. It was already in the turret, so it's not like they're getting any push. They just have to base and respond to waves. What's up, Doc Professor Sergeant Mr. J? Oh, that's tough. I'm in. Oh, there's no chance you win the game after that. Really like the flash from Poom. And then Yukino just presses R, Ziggs pre presses R, everyone melts. Yeah. And there's a 0% chance to win this draft from this spot. Hey, right, we're not going to spend too much more time on this one, guys. I think this one's pretty over. I think the narrow 4-1, again, is good. All I have to do is overload. Two and hips fall free. We have a TP top just to keep the push going. I like that from Young. It is much harder to execute. They got behind early. There was no dice in this one. It's one of those games where you need Orn, but Orn feels pretty bad in this meta. At least in this draft, too, going up against Bran. GG's. Good game one from Disguised. Now for game two. I had issues with this draft from AoE, or uh, from Disguised, in new AoE specifically. That was a very good draft from AoE. All right. Guys, Cupix a Seraphine player. Uh, a lot of the bands that you're seeing are aimed at Cupix to narrow up Cupix's pool. Um,. I'll say Ezreal's a flex ban. Um, I mean, Ser Ser if you, you're you going into a Seraphine player, guys, and you're going to start the draft with Azir Orn, you're asking to get Seraphined. In this draft, I am talking about Senna the entire time because I think one of the few ways you can actually save this draft is to actually Senna and Orn and then find damage somewhere. And at least Senna gives you a way to, like, kind of outrange and outscale Seraphine. This team from DSG, zero damage. There is no damage on this team. You ha and you have to get a reset. How do you reset into Seraphine? Like, you have to perfectly execute and get your fight off. And I thought Zinn was a great pick this game. I really like AoE's draft. You have very good potential to Wombo with a Rumble. Um, probably by next turn then. I think that AoE got a really favorable draft, and I think that for DSG, knowing who Cupic is as a player, Seraphine's up, and taking a Zir plus Orn, you're asking to get Seraphined. And I'm really glad that AoE did it. They crushed DSG in this game. Like, this game was very big draft if. Like, you're hoping that you get so far ahead early that, like, you break Seraphine, but you need, like, 4, 5, 6k gold. I'm, I'm being serious. And even if you get there, the damage you have on DSG's comp is so low between Azir, Ash. You're getting hopelessly outranged by Jinx, Seraphine, Rumble. You spike earlier as AoE, too, like as, as a comp and draft, in my opinion. It's really tough. Also, you. Sorry. You can know, sometimes plays with some flair. I do not like this. Uh, conditioning overgrowth, please. Where is my conditioning overgrowth?
Interesting. Uh, no mana regen here. I don't know about this tree for uh Young, because I know he rushes Nashers. I feel like you're kind of asking to have mana problems this game. Even though I think Yellow Tree is really good for Azir. Uh, so I, I don't love this. I would go... I would try to get access to mana in some way, shape, or form. Everything else is pretty chill. I'm a little bit surprised that we don't see Barrett go for um, Yellow Red Tree. I think Yellow Red's quite good on Rumble, but first strike, you can't farm a bit, so... I, it's not like I'm going to complain. Also, I like Comet on Seraphine. I know you get more mileage out of Airy, but I think into Azir uniquely, if he's going to trade, he does, he does have to stand. You can get Comet to connect quite a bit. All right, DSG do do something well here, and that is late invade with Azir Ash. Or Azir Ash. Ash Brom, please late invade with us. Ash Brom, late invade, yes. I guess Sudden Impact's really OP on the Ona. Everyone's talking about Sudden Impact, the Ona. Maybe I'm sleeping on this. I get, You get a lot of damage from the all-ins early. You'll have to try it. We're quite just to win the and hope it translates into a win. I agree. I just don't think they respected the Seraphine play. I will say that this opener to the game is very good. Like they put NXI in a really tough spot. So I at least appreciate they're using the draft like this. This is probably I, I casted the series. I didn't read the draft as well this series. Shout out to my peer Desirex, who actually had a better read in the Seraphine draft than me. Um I definitely let my thoughts on the teams and nameplate bias get in a little bit and who I thought would actually win this game. I mean, once Seraphine took over, I feel like I, I started to hit it home, but I, I don't I didn't have as strong of a read on this draft as I do sitting here now in the game. And I probably I should have changed that. Because there is no damage on DSG. And I, I did I talked about how like Seraphine is zero was like an old Seraphine counter. Rylai is really good in this matchup. Um, but yeah. All right, NXI contesting, or uh, NXI. His second round is getting contested as well, and this. This is still really good here from DSG. We're trying to jungle diff. Barrick flashes the R. Could flash Barrick. It's the one way you can get all in by Orn, and he missed out on the Ignite timer, so that's good. I think game states like this right now is pretty solid. I know that uh, Viego and Ash have leads, but that's kind of to be expected, and I think the level one help with that, so... Props to DSG for that. Good sidesteps here by Tomo. Um, I think Grubs don't really matter this game, so I'm okay with DSG sacking them. I like I, AOE's draft. Like in theory, they can't really abuse Grubs unless they start winning fights really hard, which I mean they do later. But yeah, and this this is good. Like DSG again, they get all the moves in the map. I, I don't love this, though, because I think that going for this play with Yukino, you you do sack the like your topside jungle, which could have been secured. So, like, Yukino is sacking quite a bit for this. Um, It's a doable timer, though. I get six and six. Okay, I'm fine with this. You have mid-prio, too. It's, I'm cool with this. Yeah. And then Breezy 
I, I, I just, I don't know about this one from Breezy. I can't really explain this one. Timing's a little bit unlucky. It's like, he sees Viego pace now, but he's already burned flash and is in there. I, I guess they're trying to one-shot Tomo, but, like, Wixie's never going to be able to R on even footing. Then he goes down too. So did she get the dive? And next side does get uh quadrant, so he gets to catch back up, which is big. He's got a seraphine with him, so where the Zin's at doesn't matter for sure. Yeah, I think Azir could have went and got mid wave too. I agree. I'm with you. Could agree to that. All right, here's where shit goes sideways. Guys, NXI almost gets one shot here. I think if he gets one shot and Vega gets a reset, it's really big. That's sad. The double W comes in and he, he lives for so long. Also, Tomo's kind of autoing NXI here and puts himself in a really bad position. He's not doing any damage to NXI. For three autos, and then he gets toasted by Barrack. Really nice E by Barrack. Barrack had a really good fight here, if you guys look back. We're gonna, look, we're gonna go back and look at Barrack's fight. Good heat management. Not the best. He's got to hold off on his abilities a little bit. He overheats, though, here. Uh, NXI ult knocks some people back, but then... Really good fight from Barrack. Beric's done a very admirable job of stepping up and stepping in here. And then Seraphine again, keeping everyone alive. It's not like they could have gotten NXI. And like again, Young doesn't have alt for this. So that hurts. I think Tenacity is a really good engage. Just like we just pulled a playoff bot. We could have played for Dragon here, but they felt like they could have fought, fought. And it wasn't the case. Like Seraphine gets the group and. Yeah. It's a wipe. And a lot of gold goes over to uh, AoE. So now your gold lead's gone. And you can see, like, I think the value of the Zin really came in here. I mean, I respect the one-shot attempt. Actually, let's... Yukino W's the grub. Yukino saves that W. I think they one-shot him. I don't want to get too nitpicky like that, but I will say that Ash Arrow was out, so that's, it looks like a split call to me. Yeah, if Yukino actually gets NXI, I missed that in the replay. If if they one shot NXI, if Diego gets a reset, this fight goes differently for sure. Fuck. I mean, I know a zero have all. I actually think that's winnable for DSG. I don't know if they need to do that. I feel like you do get outscaled in this game. So like by those metrics, I mean, I actually think this isn't too bad. But wow, that hurt. Yeah, I mean, Yukino did he have flash for this too? He did. Yeah, I think Yukino's got to hold W, and you W flash wherever this lands and just insta chain. Or you just charge W. That's a waste of a W here from Yukino. That's, that's, uh, that's quite poor, actually. Damn. Okay, I missed that. That's why we go through the bots, guys. That's closer for DSG than I thought. But again, like things just fall apart for DSG as this game goes on. Seraphine value, though, huh? Now we're keeping set in this game. Pretty hype. Did I miss anything good? Not really. You can always flash for this one too if they want to chain it. I don't know if they get the kill or not. Really nice alt here by Beric. Beric did a good job of trimming waves this game. I know he doesn't get caddy, but he always keeps himself safe. And he goes to scout where Yukino's at and actually gets Yukino's flash off screen. It, yeah. I don't know if they kill either. Uh, Rumble had, had uh, 
Sorry, hang on. Where does yeah Rumble had flash? So I don't think they do. Uh, this looks goofy from Tenacity, but he actually ease through. Breezy then gets a flash. So I, I thought that was actually well played from Tenacity. Like, the E damage does matter. He should be uh, maxing E second. Not a huge fan of Tenacity's build. I really like Fimble Winter right now, guys. I, I think the tank should be building Fimble Winter. If you can activate it with a lot of stuff, which Orn can. Also, you get more mileage out of Fimble Winter, just given that you're Orn, you get more stats. Because you're Orn. Trade from Barrack, and then yet again, Barrack alt wave at alt angle could have been a little bit better, but it's fine. At least kills the wave. Barrack knows his role. Yeah, Barrack did a really nice job in this game. I know uh, Kelsey tweeted about Barrack's ability to trim the wave against DSG who are overloading, and definitely paid off. And the more you stall, the more items Jinx gets. We have Wixie going for a very uh, more two, three item centric build in the IE first instead of going for something like Kraken. It's going to stack crit. Must say, do not mind that at all on Jinx. Especially given the, the game that you have here. And it pays off. Do the choppers. Connect. Oh, the choppers get unbreakable. Okay. Yeah. Still, we eat Ash Arrow. For nada. And then Cupic has a alt flash that hits two, chains it up, gets Poom with Wixie. Nice sync up here. Wixie spacing Tomo nicely, and if the fight's chill, AoE gets to continue to double W with Seraphine, and things are all chill. Well played, AoE. It's Echoes for Seraphine too. I mean, it a little bit is a comms diff and pull the trigger diff. I will say it's really tough into Seraphine. Seraphine has insane value this game. Good flash, Breezy. Uh, Tomo doing a nice job here. I mean, you can, can't, you can no flash. Like, this, this is what I'd say is comms diff. Can't we W flash this guy? Or flash W? Like, we're charging W. Can't we flash and W him? Wixie has no sums. If you can no gets a kill, he probably gets one shot under turret, but you know. We still have an R again. He might be able to R out. Yeah, so I, I think Yugeno could be a little bit more disciplined with some of his Ws here. I think the biggest surprise so far as challengers this season is that the Pantheon was busted out by NXI and not Yukino. Might be it. Uh, nice here from Barrick. I think Barrick, he doesn't have TP. He's going to just push the completion. Cupic's able to clear most of this wave of Seraphine. So we're still chilling here as AoE. Like, AoE cleaned up most of this, and Barrick gets a turret. So we'll put AoE. Like, AB, AoE have stabilized the ship. Really like this alt from NXI. Uh, we're split right now as DSG. I think that we overreach for Breezy for sure. Like, Tomo is... Doesn't want to walk through this choke exactly, but he walks around, and now Tomo's kind of in Narnia. And NXI has his alt going, so it's just a freebie, and then Tenacity's caught too. So I think Poom Tenacity 
got a little bit ahead of their skates here. If there's any play, I think Tenacity can flash over the wall and E. Or like, he casts the alt, so he's kind of stuck. But it the flash he in here is the one play where it's actually sound. Um, and even then, Barrett gets there before Young. So I think there's a little bit of a split call here from DSG. The flash from Tenacity was questionable. That was questionable. I missed that one on cast, too. I probably just tried to delete it from my brain. That's all right. Uh, I mean, again, I think AoE's draft, very, very good this game. Very good for them this game. And they, they put it out well. I, I really like Barrick deleting some of these side lanes. Really slowed down the overloads from DSG. And if you slow down this comp, you can see what Seraphine can do if you group up, you know? Really like this from NXI. Prep the three talent strike twice. And they're out pushing TSG, who to be fair, I have to find other ways to win this game. But they get Ash Flash, which means that Breezy gets a free engage. And then over the top from Cupix, really clean. So they take Tomo, take the inhib, and keep on pushing. Very solid. I mean, they can't win the game a uh, different way. The four man here, though, is quite poor. And it sucks when you have uh, zero grubs to six. That's why a lot of teams don't want to give six grubs. It's really hard to trade. That said, uh, they didn't help themselves. They didn't do themselves any favors. Three hips down. Young is going to continue to split. They're going to try and hold these. Young is death splitting. Hooray. Eric bases. He does have TP up. And then now they see him. Young is going to TP. But Young spotted on the TP. I got to hide my camera for this one. Watch Young. Young gets spotted on the TP. And gets one shot. Oh boy, and now Roberic is a TP in on a creep in this game. Yeah, DSG kind of wants on with a whimper. It's okay, that's only game two. We got game three, right? Uh, yes, this is the tenacity I wanted to see. All right, game three. Corky got through this game. Not exactly sure how, I'm going to be honest. Uh, we do get Oriana Zeri as a core, and then we have Rakan. So Rakan Zeri is not bad, but we gave up this. Ban Kasante Udyr to play defense. Also Udyr to somewhat target NXI. Um, Aatrox pick for Barrick, which I'm not surprised he does like his Aatrox, but I have a lot of faith in Tenacity to win this, uh, and he does. Vi to go attack the Smolder. It is Maokai into Rakan, which is doable. Uh, you have to survive first few levels, which you can somewhat do as Rakan. Or against, you can very much do against Rakan. You can cancel his grand entrance if you position well and have a good Q. Uh, or you can W out of it. And then if you get to later levels, you are just straight up, you are Maokai. You know, it's chill. So, uh, that's big. 
Uh, that being said, um, I like DSG's draft. I think that Renekton is the best pairing for Smolder because you don't want to really play around Smolder. So if you have shit to play towards top side, it's good. I think that also Smolder really wants beefcakes in front. So this is just a beefier front line, which is going to favor them later on. I like this draft a lot. The way I would change things up if I was AoE, uh, you can't really blind Braum, but I would probably not take Rakan here. I'd go for a different pick. Uh, I would either take top or jungle and then try and find support later on. So I think you're signing up for like an eh bot lane experience here. Also, like, what two bands are going to throw at you? Like, they're going to throw Lulu Zeri, or um, Lulu Rakan at you, maybe. Like, that's worst case scenario, but I think banning out for top side already is good. Like, I think that if Barrick plays Jax, this game gets a little bit easier, too. So, it was not the case, though. So, I, I think Jax is the one thing. Uh, you have to either play Jax or Cassante into this top side. Barrick picked Aatrox and got nuked in lane. Oh. Okay, this matchup, Bone Plating and Demolish makes sense. Also, it is Triumph and Cutdown. So no last stand. We have Cutdown on Renekton. Interesting. Uh, based. This is all very based. Ultimate Hunter and Zombie Ward I like. Again, I would consider going Conditioning Overgrowth. Uh, also, for Breezy, I really like um, the buffed healing and shielding uh, for Rakan. I think that the 5% is actually quite good instead of Overgrowth. I don't know the math or any breakpoints, but I think it's doable. And then we have Siri going with this again. Standard. Uh, attack speed instead of Ability Haste here is a little bit of a surprise, I must say. Everything else is pretty standard. Cool. Good trade from Young. Nice Q from Poom. Yeah, and like Tenacity has the stack. And it's the three-wave dive. Who would have thunk? Really good trade, too, from Tenacity to set this one up. And it's too easy. Loses Cannon. Loses uh, TP. Kept the Flash. Good on Barrack to keep Flash. Unless you're going to flash the E, uh, like from Sejuani, which would have been doable. Well, you would have gotten flashed out of them, but yeah. Uh, boots, no pots versus pickaxe. Good luck. Tenacity got the kill too, which is really big. Young's chilling mid, already got TP out of Cupix. So now any healthy trades, he gets to keep. And Tenacity's just trying to prune that wave. And then Tenacity gets to get this next wave in. So it's Cloth Armor and Reju for Barrack, which is good. And Tenacity gets a plate, and then he can come back with a TP. This was really good from Poom. Good three men from DSG. Uh, this timer was theirs. Their bot lane split reset, but they reset. First, this is matched on Rakan. They spot Breezy. Breezy doesn't spot Poom. Uh, Breezy did have a control ward, so could have dropped it on Cubic side, but not the case. I can't really blame him for that. Good play from DSG. So they got Cubic Flash and kill Cubic. And Sassy just gets TP back with Steel Caps. So again, top continues to be doomed. Tenacity, I think, denied Caddy. So, Drake for Grubs. Not surprised here. 
Like, that has to be the call. And then Breeze is up here in case there's a dive. Uh, which I thought was a decent timer from Breezy. I know it doesn't come in, like, turn into anything, but this is a timer where you could dive the Renekton again, so if Breeze is there to play defense, it's good. Uh, that said, they actually turned the timer into a red buff, so re this is really nice from DSG. Uh, again, Breezy's still missing down here. Not side, uh, spotted anywhere, so they respect that side of the map. They don't wait for Breezy to walk in, but they do have Tenacity, and they do see Barracks, so they just use this to take right away from NXI. And then they also get... Uh, NXI smite out. And then, I didn't like this from NXI. This for me was a tilt play. Like, you are going to get one shot if you go in like this. You're just asking for it. Which is exactly what happens. And yes, they, I mean, they don't even get Yukino here. Okay, they do. You're down a, a man, but like, Tenacity is too big still. Tenacity can 100% win this. I, 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 again, I don't know what AoE is doing here. I'll be honest. Okay, Young flashed as well. Like, Young, again, is still in the vicinity, and he comes back up, and it's, yeah. I, that's never really doable here for AoE. You're playing into Croc, who's already strong. I think you play away from the Croc. You just accept the fact that Croc's going to lead and try and outscale him later on, so. Meanwhile, Wixie. Trying to turn it against Poom. Poom plays this out pretty well. Really nice sidestep there from Poom. Do doesn't find the Q slow, but it's close. Uh, Tomo misses this, so it looks bad, but I like this from Tomo. He uses the Smolder all in reverse, so it hits earlier. It just misses. He needed to fire it this way. Said he fires it this way. And then he doesn't flash the Q. Uh, Wixie had no sums, so I think that play was there. They still get NXI, so NXI's game goes from bad to really bad with this play. And Yukino did a really nice job in this game. I mean, he had a clear game plan playing two Tenacity in the top side, but I think Yukino had a nice game. Did not agree with a couple um, takes that we had from AoE. I think they were poor. Looking back, poorer than what I thought on cast. So now you're down 3k gold to a smolder count. Good luck. Clean dive. I mean, I, I could be like, oh, why are we leading with Sejal? But that was... It was a one-shot, so, you know. Way to lead with Sejal, all of a sudden, you know? Uh, I don't like this from Q-Pick and NXI. When the ball is positioned behind, uh, you pull Young back. Uh, it's small. Uh, it doesn't lead to anything too bad, but I think that could be a little bit cleaner. You cast the Oriol sooner you can actually pull corky in and still with six scrubs for dsg which is quite deadly hey we get first two drakes which against smolder ain't bad but still oh it's not first two drakes never mind yeah big croc Tenacity so far in this game that he does go for two damage items, which I'm a huge fan of. And he also defends this blue really nicely. So well played, Tenacity. I'm going to set it up for his boy. Yeah, I think Poom could have cast this a little bit later. I'm trying to get him, though, before he, like, ease over the wall, but yeah. Not the case. Wish my top winners did that. Dude, just play Croc, man. It's fine. Croc is double the gold of Aatrox right now, pretty much. Uh, 
Uh, nice turn here from uh, AoE. Breezy lives, which is nice. And they get Tenacity TP. It's actually quite good for AoE. Um, from the DSG perspective here, Poom doesn't have an ultimate. Um, I'm fine with this engage from Poom. Uh, it's just a nice turn on the Young. Like, once Barracks here, I think Young getting this close is bad. And then he, he could have React Flashed this, but he does not. So, ping diff. He gets one shot. If he React Flashes that, I, it could be really good for DSG. I don't even understand. Uh, it's a good point from AoE. Sorry, I was trying to... It's a good point from AoE. Actually, really nice play from AoE. Tomo is behind his team. So his team's trying to respond here, but... He's already down. And Maokai ults for knots, which is quite nice. That said, DSG, the turn's good. Um... Again, Crocs here, so it's kind of a problem. Kubik did TP mid, which is fine. Harold was dropped and ended up crashing. How many series did the teams play? Uh, they played the whole league, so they played nine best of threes. Did a lot of games this weekend, though. All right, the fact they were able to survive is fine, but DSG were able to get enough of the health bar advantage where they do get Drake prio, so it's two Drakes and three K gold for Smolder. So, like with that logic, I think the skirmish is fine, and the Kubik it's not good. It's bad from Kubik. Cubic needs to go around. So, we lose Flash. I, it lives, but still. You, you have no TP, your health bar is down. There, there is a chance to actually fight for that Drake if Cupid goes around, but goes shortcut, and it's bad. These were Saturday's games. I casted these games. I mean, Croc's just way too big this game, guys. He's got a full item up on Aatrox right now. Croc can do whatever he wants. And there's not much that can stop the Croc. Also, like, Croc and the Rakan, Aatrox, value always are going to feel good. I just don't think this takes ever there for NXI. I think you can know does a nice job of peeling this back, but I think it was a pretty easy ask. It's a really nice Malachi ult. So, Poom gets a little bit chunked, but still fine. While this is going on, Croc got wave in top twice. So, Ori's jailed. Ori's no TP, so Croc can move whenever. A little bit nice. The Tenacity steps back. Doesn't need buy damage. It doesn't really matter, though. Think we go win this? I don't know. And they're winning games. They just have to win a series. I, I think they have a couple series that they can win. So I'm going to say no. Um, but their strength schedule is not in their favor. We'll put it that way. Yeah, I mean, NXI being on this word is... They don't have pressure, mid or bot. Uh, Breezy and Wixier on the other side. And Poom knocks him back. It's quite good. Kind of free. Now, Cubic's in trouble. 
Yeah, I mean, things just kind of fell apart here for AoE. Like, yeah. Not much to talk about here, guys. It was a really good lane phase from Tenacity, and I think that they drove it home well. Yeah. I think Cubic is a rook. Um, Definitely summer from solo queue. Oh my god. Okay, so Smolder gets a penna, guys, but watch Tenacity's fight this game. Tenacity's fight is so easy and so good. Like, nice penna Smolder. Completely made by Renekton. Ha! <laughs> Completely made by Renekton, guys. Good. Pentas uh, Tomo. Easiest Penta Tomo has probably ever had. This is like the one hard part. Cued. Cued. Tassie could have denied it. He did not change, man. Uh, he has Sterex. So, again, if you get super far ahead as Renekton, I really think you, you should go two offensive items. And then he's going to go Shoujin fourth. Uh, good pick from AoE. On to Yukino. That's sad. Croc is collapsing. No, I think AoE's draft isn't too hot. I think they get outranged now, interacted by a lot of stuff. Like, the again, I think that when you have Smolder... You the bigger front line wins, and DSG's front line is gonna be bigger, and they're gonna get a lead in this draft. Like it's three tankier characters at all the supported positions. The only downside is that there's a little bit of a lack of MR damage. So you can spec armor and feel better. But Again, like, treads, and then, like, treads are pretty valuable, though. Or, like, treads are decent this game, and it's Sejuani plus Malachi, so if you are going to go armor, like, you'll be victim to treads. I think it's a, a pretty decent draft here for DSG. Uh, I think that DSG really wanted the turn because they just don't want to flip, which I can understand. But I actually think that this fight was a little bit risky for them, even if they aren't like, at risk for losing. Also, like, they can just play for Kentex if they want. It's still Tenacity, like, just stun someone and then they die. Huh. Renekton is big. Me. Yeah, I mean, again, they have ways to, in theory, deal with Smolder, but then there's the Seekers. All right, so this guy says, fuck the dragon. They have six grubs. They just go take inhib. Big fan. And Tenacity is almost at risk here. But he presses R, and then he one-shots NXI. Chill. Also, he has Sojin on Renekton at this point, so I'm a big fan. Look at how much he's dashing throughout the fight and stunning. It's very good. And the fight's over. Game's over. GG's DSG. All right, folks, that's it for this series. Uh, I think three draft diffs, honestly. Uh, but so, thanks so much for tuning in. If you guys are on YouTube, I'll uh, think about giving a like, comment, subscribe. And you guys can find me at CubbyXX on Twitter.